So we're going to do one more example with logarithmic differentiation. Now, this particular example is one that we certainly already know how to do. We could handle this with some combination of product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. We get the answer, but it would be a lot of work. Um, I mentioned in one of the previous videos that one of the reasons we like logarithms is that they simplify certain arithmetic operations, right? Multiplication becomes addition. If you're taking derivatives, you'd rather take the derivative of a sum than the derivative of a product, right? Because the rules are simpler, right? So what you can do if you have something like this that looks kind of ugly, looks intimidating, looks like maybe something you don't want to do, is apply a logarithm to both sides. Okay. So why is this helpful? Well, let's see. Okay. So there's our logarithm. Now, Remember that we have various properties of logarithms that can be applied. The first one being that we can do the log of the top over the log of the bottom, right? We can apply the quotient rule for logs. Now, I'm going to put all the steps in for this example, but this is one of those things where once you have the hang of it, you probably are going to skip about half the steps that I'm including here. And that square root because you probably know where we're heading with this. Let's remember that square roots are really fractional powers. Okay. Now, inside each of these two terms, I have a product, but we know how to deal with logs of products. Right? Becomes a sum. Now, be careful here, right? That minus sign is going to apply to both of those terms. Maybe put parentheses if you're worried about keeping track. Gets us down to there. All right. One last step. We have exponents in each of these terms. We can bring those powers down in front, right? This is going to be 4 times the natural log of x. This is going to be 3 times the natural log of sine x. This one here, well, you can either think of bringing that x squared plus 1 down in front. Natural log of e is just 1. Or again, remember that the natural log and the exponential function, they're inverses of each other. So they cancel out, and they just give you whatever is left, which is x squared plus 1 in this case. And finally here, bring down that one half, and we're left with the natural log of x to the 4 plus 5. Um, one last note of caution. There are going to be a lot of you that are tempted to try and do something here, but you can't simplify that any further, right? There is no rule for the natural log of a sum. Okay. So now that we've split that up, where do we go from here? Well, take the derivative of both sides, right? Recognizing that we would much rather take the derivative down here than up here. So what we get is on this side, right? Chain rule says we should get 1 over f of x times f prime of x. And do remember that you still have to take the derivative, right? Um, I've seen a lot of students who, you know, having done all this work, taking the log of both sides, say, oh, yeah, I, there we go, that's my derivative. But, no, we haven't done a derivative yet. All we've done is take the logarithm. So, derivative of the left-hand side, 1 over f times an f prime from the chain rule. On the right-hand side, things are more straightforward, right? Constant rule, 4 stays put, derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. Again, constant rule. Uh, we use this same rule that you see over here on the left to deal with these, right? So we do 1 over 
the function on the inside times the derivative of that function, so the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay. x squared plus 1, the derivative is simply 2x. And finally here we have minus 1 half again, take the derivative of the natural log, so we get 1 over whatever is inside the natural log. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside. So the derivative of x to the 4 plus 5 is 4x cubed. Okay, almost done. There's still one thing. We still have to multiply by f of x. And keep in mind that that f of x, it has to multiply everything, right? So f prime of x is f of x, which is, um, it's right here, right? x to the 4 sine cubed x e to the x squared plus 1 x to the 4 plus 5, right? That's f of x times 4 over x plus 3 if you want, cos over sine. You could write that as cotan minus 2x. Um, 2 cancels with the 4, right? minus 2x cubed over x to the 4 plus 5. And there's your derivative, all right? So I think compared to doing, say, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, that's a lot less work.